Welcome to the Pat Clone Creating a Video Game Series. This is the eighth video in the series, so I'm just going to call it like it is, Video 8. If you missed any of the previous videos in this series, check the YouTube notes at the bottom. You should be able to catch up quickly. To recap, what I'm trying to do is I am trying to create a Pat Clone game using the CBM Program Studio, a cross compiler that allows you to use your modern PC to write program code and execute it in the Vice 64 emulator. This series is of a technical nature and is intended for those who are interested in programming on the Commodore 64. In this video I have three demos prepared which demonstrate ghost reversal of direction, fruit implementation, and a bug fix. I want to let you know that two of the demonstrations were completed six weeks ago with CBM 3.7 and at that point I temporarily shelved the project to recharge my battery so that I can come back strong. I was a little bit burned out, but I'm back. Demo 1, Ghost Reversal, and Demo 3, Bug Fix, were done in early May, leaving the Fruit Demo, which was recently recorded. I still hope to complete the project by early next year, slowly chipping away at it in the meantime. I plan to continue posting these videos about once every four to six weeks. I also plan to do at least one spoiler video once the game is finished. Okay, so in this video clip, I am going to implement a modification to the program whereby it will change the direction that the ghosts move in randomly after every so many moves. You'll notice in the original arcade Pac-Man that this happens. You'll be the the ghosts will be moving around and then all of a sudden they swap directions. They go in the in, a, in a, the reverse of of the direction that they're going in. So I thought that this would add a bit of randomness to the game and right now it, it's not implemented but when it is I think that'll make it just that more um, unpredictable so so let's get into it so the piece of code or the the area in my program that needs to be modified is where the program counts the ghost moves and so right now I have a section of code where what it does is it counts the, how many times a ghost moves and then it does something and what I'm going to do is split this up and um, add some lines of code right here and I've already implemented this code so I'm going to bring that up over here so what I did was I shoved this section of code here down a little and then I added a variable called a random move counter and I thought after every 50 moves I was going to try out, then reset the counter back to zero, reverse the direction of all the ghosts, and then continue on with the counter before. And then I just have an increment 400 just in, so I know that it's um, changing directions every so often. 400 is the top left position of the uh, screen data. And so it'll just change the character there uh, every 50 moves. Then the re to reverse the direction of the ghosts, all I have to do, I have a, a variable for each ghost is the previous direction. And so what that controls is every all that all that takes all that um is recording is the previous direction that the ghost has moved in. Left, 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 up, 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 right, right, right. So just that one direction, the last direction that the ghosts move in and what I want to do is swap that so if he was moving left then I want the previous direction to be right because I have coded this in such a way that it's not allowed you're not allowed to move in the previous direction so if I just swap the contents of that variable for each of the ghosts ghost two ghost one is the pack clone but ghost two three four and five are the variables are, are the ghosts these are the ghost variables for ghost two three and four and five so the previous direction so we load up ghost oops we load up ghost two previous direction variable uh, JSR to swap it so if it's left make it a right if it's right make it a left and then store it back there and then that's all I'm doing here on all all of these so load ghost three swap it direction, store it back in the previous direction for ghost 3, same thing for 4, same thing for 5, and so on. Now to swap the direction, this is right above this, 
this uh, routine up here. I'm loading up the variable, ghost2 for example, the previous direction. Now all it does is it compares this to up. If it's up, then jump down to here, swap it to down. So if it's up, make it down. If it's down, then go down to this branch and then make it up. If it's left, it checks for left. If it's left, then make it right. And then the default, if it's right, I don't have to check it, I can just make it left. So that's how it swaps up, down, left, and right. And let's uh, check this out, see what it looks like when it's actually running. And this um, also applies to, to when the, there's blue time. And it also applies to the eyeballs moving back to the ghost cage. So. so every 50 or so moves, it hasn't done it yet, you'll see. Just kind of watch one of the ghosts. Boom. See there, it reverse direction. So I'm going to eat some of these ghosts. And let's watch them swap directions here. Uh, I think I missed it. Oh yeah, there it goes, right there. So anyway, that's that's how I implemented the randomness factor, <laughs> the uh, unpredictableness. So I don't know, for now I'm going to stick with 50 moves and every 50 or so ghost moves, they'll swap directions into the opposite direction that they were running. While on the subject of, chain, of reversing the ghost directions, I decided that I would also reverse the ghost directions when the energizer is eaten. And this is the section of code that gets executed when the energizer is eaten by Paclone. And I added these lines of code right here. So I load one of the ghost blue time values, compare it to, to check to see if it's on, if it is, I skip it so I don't reverse the ghost. I don't reverse the ghost directions. So I don't want to reverse it if it's if they're already blue. I'll just let them move around like normal. But if it's the first time, I go ahead and reverse them. So that gives that added effect. Let's see what that kind of looks like. So I'm gonna let the ghost exit the cage for a minute. And then I'm going to eat an energizer and watch them reverse. See that? So that's that effect. And then if you eat another energizer, it does nothing. It doesn't reverse them. So I'm revisiting this little piece of code here that, I were, that we were just looking at. And there's an inherent problem with just using ghost2 as your comparison because it's not taking into account the blue time for all the ghosts. So in order to do that, it's really an elegant and simple fix, and that's just to use your AND and OR operations, but in this example, just the OR operation. So we're going to do the OR, OR A, ghost 3, blue time. Because these, these variables are either 1 or 0 at all times, we can just do an OR operation on them and then OR all of them. So we have ghost 2, ghost 3, ghost 4, and 5. So this is essentially the first ghost, second ghost, third ghost, fourth ghost. The OR operations is like if you have, if uh, blue time, if ghost 2 is a 0 OR ghost 3 is a 1, then it's a 1. 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 1 is a 1. That's how the or operation works. So if any of these is a 1, this or this or this or this, if any of these is a 1, then we'll skip and we won't do the reverse directions for the ghost. So let's see if this works. And I'll we'll run that. Okay, so what we want to see is when Pac eats a energizer, 
We want to see a reverse in direction. There, you saw that. And then I want to eat a few of them, or try to. And then when we eat an, when we eat another energizer, when we eat another energizer, it should not have an effect to reverse. And you see there, no effect. And we'll do that again. No effect. This is exactly the way we want it to work. Okay, in this segment, I am going to be covering the implementation of the fruit, both uh, displaying the fruit in the bottom right corner of the game and also displaying the fruit in the middle of the game during gameplay so that you can eat the fruit. And right now, this has not been implemented, but let me pull it up just to give you an idea of what my thoughts are. So, let me move out of the way and pause it. So I was gonna have the fruit appear right here, just like on Pac-Man in the center of the map. It's not gonna be dancing fruit like on this Pac-Man. And over in the bottom right corner, the level indicator is gonna be right here and as you progress through the levels, this is going to, you know, uh, from the from the far right, it's going to have let's just call it the strawberry, the you know, the apple, the orange, whatever the fruit is. Um, might not even be, end up being fruit when I'm done with it, but I'm just going to call this fruit. And there's going to be a maximum of eight going back, so eight characters going back. I'm going to implement it in the way that Miss Pac-Man implements it. Um, not in the way that the original arcade Pac-Man implements the fruit down on the bottom right, which is more of a complicated way of doing it. So in this Pac-Man, essentially they list all the fruit down here on the bottom right, and then when you get to the banana level, it just stays that way. And I find that to be appropriate for this uh, program. But now instead of uh, showing you what I've already done, I'm going to do this in real time, but speed up the clock. I'm going to kind of challenge myself. I'm thinking I can probably do implement all of this and all of what I've discussed in about an hour to an hour and a half, with the exception of I am not going to, in, during that time frame, implement the scoring, and I'm not going to implement the sprites for the scores at this time. So let's see let's see how close I get and I'll go over the code once it's been once it's been written I'll show you what I did and how I did it and uh let's see let's see how I do This segment was sped up over a hundred times in order to demonstrate some real-time coding and to challenge myself to get this piece of code written fairly quickly. It represents about an hour and four minutes of footage. If anybody would like the uncut real-time footage, hit me up in the comments. I am utilizing CBM Program Studio version 3.8. Okay. Flash forward one hour and seven minutes, and here I am. I have this part implemented, the fruit. So let me go into it. You can see on the code on the screen, but let me hit F5 to demonstrate it working. And then I'll show you what I did to implement. So I decided to imp have the fruit show up in the, bot in the middle center, right underneath the the ghost cage right here. But the way I decided to implement it was, you know, on the previous segment I showed you how I reversed the ghosts. Well what I decided to do, and, and there it is, there's the first fruit. So what I decided to do was every third or, or every second time the ghosts are reversed to just display that fruit. And then every fourth time make it disappear. And then every sixth time make it reappear and, and on the eighth time make it disappear. I'm not really sure. I, I, I so, so you see right there it disappears. 
I'm not so sure that's the way it's supposed to work. Um, that's really easy to, to change though. So right now it appears for a little while, then it disappears. And then it appears again later on, and then it disappears. I'll, I'll have to tweak the duration. And then I did implement the scoring on just the first fruit. The first and one or two of the fruits I implemented a basic scoring but it just increments the score it doesn't it doesn't um, display a point value uh, sprite like you it, like you do when you eat a ghost also you'll notice in the bottom right it's displaying the fruit I'm calling that the fruit it's not the actual fruit that I'm gonna probably go with um, once I'm done and then when I skip to the next level now it shows both fruits at the bottom right right there and then I haven't tested this part out so let's see it should display that little underscore as the fruit for this level if I did if I did it right <laughs> yeah so now it's a little underscore I won't be able to I'll, I'll eat it but I won't get points for it I don't think yeah see no points Okay, <clears throat> so going into the code, uh, it took me a while to get this straightened out, but I, I, I have the fruits defined right here. I just have to come up with the right characters I want to use. So I just went with 81, 82, all the way down to 88. And then I have the fruit levels right here, fruit levels going across the screen, 1 through 8. And then I reference them, so I, I only have to put it in one spot, fruit 1, fruit 2, so this way I can address them in an array fruit levels comma y or fruit levels comma x and then for each of the colors I also have a fruit colors so fruit colors comma x will get me the color values for each one of the fruits and I have to tweak these to get them to be the right color and then the fruit map I know it says CTR it's kind of ambivalent or uh, ambiguous what that means it's counter in this example so Every time there's a reversal, I increment this counter by one. And let's go looking for that really quick. Fruit. Fruit map counter. So in the portion of the code that reverses, that reverses all the ghosts after every 50 moves, what I did is I squeezed in a little portion of code right here and so it it increments the fruit map counter by one then it loads it has this happened two times if it has then go ahead and display the first fruit if it's if it's the fourth time then remove that first fruit that was just displayed if it's the sixth time then display the the second fruit cuz i'm going to be more i'm going to be traditional like uh, pac-man i'm going to display the fruit two times on on uh, the maps and then after the eighth time remove the second fruit and then to you can see to erase the fruit I'm loading a 20 which is a space store it at the position which I defined on the screen as fruit on screen and then to place the fruit I'm lo loading the map index that tells you which map you're on and then loading the fruit level comma X so that tells you which fruit to load up and then store it on the screen and I'm doing the same thing with the color load the fruit colors comma X to get the proper color of that fruit and then store it at the fruit color position on the screen so that's how that displays the little dot that just displays the little fruit right under here that's what that does now I'm going to show what I the code that I just wrote that displays the fruit in reverse order right here it displays which fruit you have here for level one level two level three it just moves over kind of goes backwards so when the level is completed I have a, a, a routine to reset the level and I just decided to throw it in at, near the top of that I, I reset that counter that I was just showing you and then I dis I JSR jump subroutine to display the fruit level. 
So display fruit level. Now, this is just a quick loop to loop through all the fruits depending upon which map you're on. So let's look at it real quick. Load Y, register Y with zero. Load the accumulator with the fruit positions, which I set up right here. You'll notice that goes in reverse order. E, and I'll show you that because on the map, on the bottom right, this very corner here on the bottom right, if you see, I got my mouse on the bottom right. It is position 7E7 on the bottom right. 7E7. And then the one before that is 7E6. Before that, you know, E4, E5, E4, E3, E2, E0. So I want to display them in that order. 7 position E7, E6, E5, E4. And that's what these are. E7, E6, E5, E4, E3, all the way down to E0. So that's the fruit positions on the, on the screen. Now, I'm kind of cheating right here. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a little bit of a self-modifying code. And so it says fruit bottom right plus one, fruit bottom right plus one. That will modify this E7 portion. So not the, not the 0, 07, but it will modify the E7. So I'm saying load the E7 here, store it, at the, where this label is, plus one, which will modify the E7 portion. And then that way I can just increment the loop. And then as I increment, I'm actually going down. I'm, I'm going E7, E6, E5, E4, E3, until I hit either eight or until I hit the max level that I'm on, the current level. So I only want it to do the first, if I'm on level three, I only want it to show three fruits at the bottom right. And that's what this comparison is doing right here. If it hits the first three, because I'm on map three, but and in, or either if it hits the max level, which is eight. Now I'm probably going to have to tweak this further as I go along. This this is my first cut at it, you know, and and I, this isn't my final. Um, it's probably going to have to. There's going to be some more modifications, and I. So not only did I modify the position the E7 but also the color position so that's the screen value and this is the color value so I just store them right there and then that's what displays the text and I'll, I'll demonstrate that again so that's what displays the fruit on the bottom right and if I skip a level displays two fruits and then if I were to jump ahead in the code I, there's a uh, if I just make oops, the map index if I just make it like five or, or whatever it should display six fruits down on the bottom right And you see there's the fruits in the bottom right. Oops, cancel. Let me make sure you can see that. There's the fruits there on the bottom right. And with their individual color values. And then the final thing, to actually eat those fruits. So I have the eight fruits. But the program code, if you don't tell it that, that that's a not a wall. So I have to go into uh, the portion of the code that says this is not a wall. It, com it loads that piece. So when Pac-Man's trying to go up, it checks to see if that's a wall value or not, if it's a wall or if it's a space or a dot or an energizer. In this case, we're telling it there's these eight fruits right here are not wall characters. So that allows the Pac clone to eat those fruits and then the final piece of this uh, puzzle, which I'm eating the elephant uh, one bite at a time, the final piece is to actually implement the scoring and to give assign point values for each of these fruits. For the fruit 
I might go up to 5,000 for the max value. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still thinking about that. In this segment, I'm going to demonstrate a bug in the program that I corrected, but not through changing the program code, but by modifying the program variables. And I'll show you what that entails in a minute, but let's look at the bug first. So I noticed that I've just been putting off, there's some certain bugs you just don't have time to really look at. Let me turn the volume up a little. Okay. Oh, about to get eight. And I turned their aggression up a little. Um, so I, I'm not able when I when I push right on this location, or I'm not sure if it's any location, but I know for a fact in certain locations on the board when I try to turn right, it won't let me. And ooh, oh. and so that's the bug. I'm. I'm if I'm going up and down and then I push right, it doesn't turn right until I get to the very top. Okay. Now, it this is one of those bugs that took me a couple hours, and this is why this project's taken so long. It took me a couple hours to narrow it down. And what it turned out, the problem turned out to be that I have these variables here, um, the G dollar length and the G dollar, which is which is hold your directions up, down, left, and right. But if you notice, the G dollar here is a temporary variable. They only have three bytes, and that was the problem. So when I added a couple more bytes in there, that made the problem go away because what it was happening it was overriding the length here it was it was going past 3 so it was stomping the program was stomping on itself and let's see if that actually made it work so now i can turn left right there and they're so aggressive right now okay wait turn turn left i said turn left but turn right right here yeah so now i can now I can turn right. Yeah, it was impeding progress in the game. I couldn't get to certain areas. And as a program, it's a fix that I made in the variables and not in the code. And the reason why I chose to do it that way was I didn't want to add check extra checks in the high traffic CPU area of the program. I didn't want to slow it down any. So I figured I'd just give it a couple extra bytes, and I did it here. I did it on all of on all of them. I, I haven't done it. I haven't implemented it here, but every single place where uh, for pack clone, and then for all the ghosts, it needs to have a couple extra extra bytes added to it, and that makes that problem go away.